Hi, it's Lindley Oz, and welcome to another episode of Truth Hunters, because then you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What if everything that you've been taught about the end times, Bible prophecy, even the teachings of Jesus Christ, and about how you are supposed to walk with the Lord as a servant or disciple of Christ, what if all of those things have been a bunch of lies mixed with truth? What if we have all been deceived by the very teachings of the scholars and all the people who have not only deceived us, but piggybacked off of other people's teachings? What if the very ones who have taught us all about how we're supposed to walk with the Lord, about how we are to be as Christians, about end times Bible prophecy and all of those other things. What if they come from the very movement that the Antichrist comes from? Well, I find that pretty frightening to be honest. And so back in early 2020, when I realized this, I was very concerned. And that is what led me on my journey, which I'm still in that journey today of digging for the truth for myself when I went to the Lord and I asked him to remove all former teachings that I had ever been taught from my brain. And I wanted to start over, to start completely fresh with him solely leading me. So I prayed for wisdom and understanding. I made a covenant with him that I would not read anyone's books. I would not watch anyone's videos. I would not even so much as read commentaries, nothing nothing at all except for the Bible and word studies in the original Hebrew and Greek. So I made a promise to the Lord that that is what I would do. And I'm still under that promise today so that I could find the truth. Are all of you so sure that you know the truth? Are you that positive? Have you searched for yourself as if searching for buried treasure? Have you gone to the Lord and asked him to remove all former teachings, everything that you've ever been taught and to have him solely lead you through the word of God for yourself, only doing word studies because Jesus Christ himself even commented about this several times in the Bible. Among those times you can find in Luke 10, where he begins to praise God. And he says, I praise you, O father that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and instead revealed them to infants or babes, people who are unlearned, uneducated. The wise and intelligent are the people with a education. So Jesus talked about it. He even said, unless you convert and become like a child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So all of these things would lead me on this journey of finding the absolute truth. And I would have to be very obedient. Now I've lost friends and just people I know on the internet because they send me videos and I refuse to watch the videos because I can't, because I made a promise to God that I can't do that. Or people who try to teach me or tell me this is wrong and that's wrong. And they want to teach me and they use the term iron sharpens iron. Okay. Well, iron isn't iron. If it's not from the Lord God Almighty. Therefore, it's not iron sharpening iron. And why do I need a human to teach me when I've put my faith and my trust in the Lord God Almighty to take me through his word on his own? So I trust the Lord and he has just been revealing great things to me. All of you should be very concerned about what you have been taught. The Bible tells us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. It also tells us to be like a Berean and study everything. It also tells us to study to show ourselves approved. The Bible also tells us to rightly divide the word of God. And so you see this whole Mark of the Beast teaching that I've been doing. What's very interesting is when we say the Mark of the Beast is literally something that goes on or in the hand or forehead. We are not rightly dividing the word of God because that is only found in the book of Revelation. It contradicts what Jesus said when Jesus said in Mark chapter seven, beginning with verse 14, that nothing that goes into your body can defile or desecrate it. But what comes forth from your heart and out of your mouth? 
There's so many things, so many things, if you rightly divide the word of God, that prove to us what the mark of the beast is. Furthermore, the book of Revelation is written in apocalyptic style writing, which is symbolic. This is why you have things such as a seven-headed beast coming out of the ocean with seven heads, ten horns. You have these demonic creatures on horseback, and I think it's Revelation 9. You have Jesus coming with swords coming out of his mouth. It is symbolic. We cannot read it literal, and that is where we have gotten into trouble. Babylon, the great harlot, is the great apostasy. And it is confusion by mixing, confusion by mixing. That is what Babylon means. So then that takes us back to the garden, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, good representing the truth and evil representing the deception, the lies. So truth mixed with lies. Babylon, confusion by mixing. That takes us to the false prophet. The ones who have taught us Bible prophecy falsely, false prophet. Not only that, but they also give false prophecies and they have taught us fake signs and fake wonders that will occur that the Bible doesn't really say will happen. Now, it's important to understand Revelation 13, we know the serpent gives them their power or authority. And then 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, I believe it is, goes into a little bit more detail about that. So they will make their false signs and false wonders happen. But that is not really what the Bible is talking about in the book of Revelation. The reason it happens this way is because Satan wants to deceive God's people. He does not want you to know what the real mark of the beast really is. He wants you to think that it's something that it is not so that you will miss it. And therefore missing the mark of God almighty. The definition of sin is missing the mark, missing the mark of God. The word seal, when it is talking about the seal of our salvation is defined as mark. You are marked by God when you are truly saved. If you are not marked by the Holy Spirit, who is the seal or mark of our salvation, just remember the term in the Bible that is oftentimes used about circumcision or cutting of the heart. If you are not marked by God with the Holy Spirit, the seal of our salvation, then you are marked by Satan, the mark of the beast which takes place in your heart by rejecting Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach and his salvation and following after counterfeit Jesus and the counterfeit spirit and a counterfeit gospel and a counterfeit God. That, my friends, is all over the entire Bible, which I have been revealing to you all. It's absolutely amazing when you sit down and study the word of God for yourself with the Holy Spirit leading you and Jesus Christ, Yeshua, rabbi, teacher, teaching you. It's absolutely amazing all of the things you will discover that you have been lied to about. All of the things that you will discover when you do word studies that we are not really supposed to do as disciples of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. But it all depends. How open are you to the Lord God Almighty? Are you so prideful that you think you know it all already? I used to think I knew it all too. But look at the church of Laodicea. The church of Laodicea, they think they know everything. That's what it means about I am rich. I don't need anything. But they need eye solve to open their eyes so that they can see and they need to be refined. So they think they know it all. They think that they're rich in the knowledge, rich in the treasures of Jesus Christ. But little do they know that they are naked and destitute. 
So you see, my friends, it's time for us to really take these things seriously. Our walk with Jesus Christ, Yeshua, is much deeper, much more serious than what we have been taught. As I continue studying the word of God and going through things, I am in awe daily at the things that I find. And I am stricken with conviction at the things I had been doing in my life that I never even realized were sin. Jesus is coming for a bride who is spotless and without blemish or wrinkle. Ask yourself, do you really trust the teachers who have taught you everything and the preachers and the pastors who may very well have had good intent, but were deceived themselves? Do you trust them with your eternity? Throughout the Bible, we see many writings about the lazy person, the sluggard, and how it is to their own destruction. The overall majority of alleged Christians today want to be spoon-fed. That's where the laziness or the sluggard comes in. They want to be spoon-fed. They rely on their Sunday morning pastor. They rely on their books. They rely on their videos. They rely on their commentaries. They rely on their self-helps, their PowerPoints, whatever, their daily affirmations, maybe reading just a chapter in the Bible or a couple verses here and there for comfort. They rely on all of those things without deeply searching the word of God for themselves. And it is a lot of work, but I will tell you, it is so enjoyable when you really seek the Lord. And he opens up a whole brand new, I don't know, dimension of the Bible to you. It's like peeling back layers of an onion. There's all these different layers and it is so exciting and you hunger for it. It's like the first thing you want to do once you begin to really do it and to set aside time and to study the word of God for yourself. The Bible tells us that Satan has raised up many false teachers the book of revelation chapter 13 when it talks about the voice or the mouth that is given to the image of the beast that word is defined in greek as preachers and it is deeply rooted in teachers also we know that satan goes off to destruction so it's very interesting jesus himself said that the gate is wide, which leads to destruction, but the gate, which leads to eternal life is narrow and only few, a remnant will enter in only few. So you can guess or safely assume that whatever the overall majority of the church is following after listening to or believing is deception. What is Satan going off to destroy? Well, I will tell you, he goes off to destroy the truth of God's word, the real gospel message by mixing truth with lies. He goes off to destroy God's people because they're following after a counterfeit Jesus and a counterfeit spirit, which is really the antichrist spirit Thus, you have people calling on counterfeit Jesus as their Lord and Savior, inviting the Antichrist spirit into their temple or their heart to dwell, which desecrates, profanes, and defiles their temple. This is a very sad thing, my friends. And most people who hear the truth don't want to hear it. They reject it when they are shown the truth. You can lay it open in the Bible for them to see, but they want to believe their false teachers. Most of them who are using extra biblical or scientific resources in order to teach the Bible. What they do is they add stuff in to their teaching that you can't find in the Bible, but things that are extra biblical. Now the book of revelation at the end warns anyone who adds to or takes away from the words of this prophecy, the plagues of this prophecy will be added to them. This is a very serious thing. The Bible tells us also that those of us who teach are more accountable 
And it is a very serious matter to teach the word of God and to rightly divide the word of God. Very serious. And everyone who does any sort of teaching should take that very seriously. The same is true with prophets. You have a gazillion self-proclaimed prophets anymore. Being a prophet is a very serious matter. Very serious. There are many false prophets who have gone out into the world. And there are many antichrists who are among us today. So what do you want, my friends? What is it you want from your relationship that you have? with the Lord. Do you want to make sure that you're following the real Yeshua, Jesus from the Bible? Is that important to you? Is your salvation important to you? Please don't give me the, oh my gosh, it's wrong of you to cause people to question their salvation. No, it's not. The Bible says, and I quote again, work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. The overall majority of the church is not following Jesus Christ, Yeshua of the Bible. They are following a different Jesus, a different gospel, and a different spirit, which is all antichrist, which means instead of. They have made this Jesus Christ who is counterfeit with their hands. They've slapped the name Jesus on something that is not Jesus. They've slapped the name Holy Spirit on something that is not the Holy Spirit, which by the way is blaspheming the Holy Spirit, which is the unpardonable sin. The overall majority of the church has been deceived. The body of Christ has been beheaded. That is why you see Jesus in Revelation chapter five, standing there as a lamb, as if slain. It doesn't say he is slain. It says as if slain. Because the body of Christ has been beheaded and replaced with a counterfeit. The church has been beheaded. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, Yeshua of the Bible, has been removed. The real Holy Spirit has been removed. The real God Almighty has been removed. That is why the tribulation period is a time of darkness. That is why the sun goes dark. You see, the sun goes dark because the sun is symbolic of Jesus and its burning heat is his judgment. But the sun goes dark. The moon, which represents God's people, is turned into blood. Why is that? Because they are being put to death spiritually because they are being profaned. Their temple is being profaned. They're being destroyed. Satan goes off to destruction, destroying the people of God. But yet this is all happening and has been happening and people don't see it. Instead, people see what's going on in the world. People see what's going on in politics. People wanna focus on the president of the United States or the leader of another country. They want to focus on the problems and the cares of the world. But you see, the world is run by the devil. God gave him dominion until Jesus Christ, Yeshua, returns. He is referred to in the Bible, we're talking about Satan, as the God of the world. So why would it surprise us the evil things are going on in the world? Why does abortion surprise us? Why does murder and every horrible thing that goes on, God being taken out of schools and all these other things. Why should that surprise us when Satan is the king or the God of the world? Should we just do nothing? Well, no, we need to pray for the world. We need to pray for its leaders. We need to pray for those things. But the overall majority of Christians are sitting around fighting something that does not belong to them. The world does not belong to you once you are truly saved of course if you're saved by counterfeit apostate jesus well then i guess it does because you're still walking in the flesh and you're still deceived but a true follower of yeshua hamashiach jesus christ a true disciple of jesus christ yeshua puts to death the flesh the flesh kingdom is no longer theirs we pray for it but we are not part of it it says we are strangers in a foreign land. 
we are not members of this world kingdom. We are members of the kingdom of heaven, which is scattered all over the world. We no longer have a flesh and blood nation. We have a spiritual nation, which is the kingdom of heaven on this earth. Now, you're more than welcome because I'm not your boss. You're more than welcome to continue going after the things of the flesh. You're more than welcome to continue going after the leaders of the flesh, your flesh kings. But God Almighty sent to this earth, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, to be our final once and for all flesh king and God in the flesh at the same time. And so you see Jesus Christ, Yeshua, he's my leader. He's my king. He's my captain. He's my chief. He's my president. His is the kingdom I belong to. And that is how it should be for you. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. The word gods is rooted in political leaders. Before me, the word before means along with, besides me, replacing him instead of none. We're not to have any. We're to come out of the flesh. Now, if you want to keep walking in the flesh and you want to hold on to your politics, that is up to you. But I'm going to teach the truth because I'm responsible before God Almighty of what comes out of my mouth. And I will not lie. And I cannot lie to you. You need to come out of the flesh while there is still time. Quit concerning yourself with the things of the world. The devil wants you to look at the things of the world. Because you are too busy looking at the Pope or the Catholics or, or the queen died or everything else going on in the world, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, and everything else and the liberals and the left and the right. And you're so busy looking at the Illuminati and the Freemasons and all of these other things and Hillary Clinton and what the homosexual people are doing. You're so busy looking at all of those things that the devil is slipping one in behind your back while you're looking at this other thing. He is slyly deceiving you behind your back because the real threat, my friends, is in the church. Those things that I mentioned previously belong to Satan's kingdom. We are to pray for it, pray for the people, pray about abortion, Pray for the mothers. Pray for those mothers. Go help a single mother. Go help a pregnant woman. Do the things you ought to do to help the sinners and the lost in this world. But standing around fighting it and griping about it, that's not even prophesied in the Bible. You standing around fighting for it is pointless fighting in the flesh, that is. But if more believers fought for things in the spirit by praying and praying, for the people who would go to have an abortion. Pray for the people who are child abusers. Pray for the children who are abused. Pray for the people who are robbers and thieves and liars. Pray for the murderers. Pray for all of these people, the idolaters. Pray for the apostates. Pray for all of them. Go to the Lord God Almighty. Be a witness, stand up and be a true witness of the Lord God Almighty. Be an example, be a light shining in the darkness. Come on, you guys, the more of us that rise up in the truth of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, and repent and truly put to death the flesh, we will be a city on the hill in this time of darkness, shining the light of the real Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah for all to see. We will not be great in number. But the light that shines through Jesus Christ through us will be mighty. Come out of the flesh. Come out of Babylon. The church today teaches a message that is about the flesh. It's the truth mixed with lies. So they have a little bit of spirit mixed in. But it's all about the flesh. Jesus Christ, Yeshua of the Bible, he didn't teach about a flesh kingdom. He taught about putting to death the flesh. He taught about a spiritual kingdom, and that is the kingdom of heaven ruled by God Almighty and Jesus Christ, Yeshua, and the power of the real Holy Spirit. That is the kingdom Jesus Christ, Yeshua, taught of. He didn't come here and tickle our ears 
at all. He didn't tickle our ears with a flesh kingdom or a flesh appealing message. In fact, he said, I didn't come to bring peace, but I came to bring a sword to set a mother against her daughter, a father against his son. I came to divide. Are you consecrated of God? Are you set apart? Do you know your Lord, your God Almighty? Do you know Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ? Do you really? Because the Jesus Christ, Yeshua of the Bible does not approve of living in sin. The Jesus Christ, Yeshua of the Bible does not approve in you fighting over political matters or flesh matters. He said, love your enemies and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. He said, if someone steals from you, give them more. Are you loving your enemies and praying for those who spitefully use you and persecute you? Or are you spending your time online on social media, griping and complaining about those people, posting things, making fun of those people, posting things, insulting those people? Well, let me just tell you this, no matter how much you hate a political leader, number one, Hatred for a person doesn't come from God. Number two, God is in charge and God placed that person in their position for this time to fulfill his purposes. That is what God wanted or it would not be the case. So when you fight it and insult it and put it down, you're actually shaking your fist in the face of God Almighty because he is the one who appoints every leader for every nation in this world to fulfill his plan. And what are we as willing slaves supposed to do? You know, someone just commented about we're not slaves. Yes, we are. Go study your Bible. Revelation chapter one, bond servants, definition, slave, willing slave. You're either a slave of the kingdom of hell or you're a slave of the kingdom of heaven. Take your pick. There's no in between. And there's only those two things you can be. Pick one or the other, but you can't have both but as a slave a willing slave of yeshua hamashiach jesus christ is his willing servant what are you supposed to do god's in charge he's our head honcho we are supposed to obey him and to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of god and we are supposed to pray for our enemies it is not your place to rise up and to shake your fist in the face of God and to insult, put down, make fun of whatever the people God has put in place. Again, Jesus Christ said, love your enemies. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Paul and Peter both said that we are to obey the ruling authorities of this world and to be at peace with them. Now, ultimately, if you are asked to do something that goes against the word of God, you peacefully decline. That means you take the punishment. Why do you take the punishment? Well, Jesus was our example and is our example. You can also see all of the disciples and the early church. Those are an example for us too. They are a witness of the testimony of Jesus Christ. You are on the devil's domain until Jesus returns. Therefore, if you are asked or told to do something that goes against what God says to do, you are in all legal aspects breaking the law of this land, which belongs to the devil. But God has given you consent to break the law of the land if you are told to do something that goes against the word of God. Therefore, you have to take the punishment of the land in which you live, and you must do it peacefully as a witness and a testimony of Jesus Christ, just like the early church did. Where am I telling you wrong? Some people like to quote the scripture from the New Testament where Jesus tells them to take a sword they said, we have two. He says, two is enough. And it tells us what that passage is about. That passage was to fulfill a prophecy that Jesus basically was hanging out with rebels or criminals or something like that. 
Also, that very night, which Jesus being God in the flesh and the son of God would have known, Peter had a sword. Why did he have a sword? Well, he had a sword because Jesus said two is enough. Now there's 11 disciples present when he says two is enough. Judas is off doing something else. So two is enough. If he wanted them to use the swords, he would have told them to have more swords. Anyhow, back to the point that very night, Jesus gets arrested. Peter has a sword. He uses the sword and takes off the ear of the servants of the people arresting Jesus. Jesus then had an opportunity to show absolute love, unconditional love for our enemies because he took the ear of the servant of the soldiers arresting him and he healed the man's ear in front of everyone. So he did a miracle in front of all of these people who were arresting them. And then he turned and rebuked Peter and he said, he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. There is no example in the New Testament of God's people killing other people with weapons. The Old Testament, yes, but Jesus changed things when he came. For instance, Jesus said, you heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for them who spitefully use you and persecute you. He told us to forgive our enemies. So why don't you all study the Bible, study it deeply and prayerfully and understand who you are in Christ, understand what you are supposed to do. Take these things to the Lord. You know, I'm not your keeper. I'm just a teacher and I can lead you and guide you in certain directions according to what God's word says and encourage you. But ultimately these things are between you and God. You can get mad at me. You can tell me I'm wrong and that is okay because I am the one who will have to kneel before God in judgment and give account for every word I ever spoke, everything I ever did, everything I never said and everything I never did. I will have to give account for everything and your blood will not be on my hands. My friends, this is an important decision. We are down to the period of time where grace is almost up. Those who refuse to repent, those who refuse to look into these things and to prayerfully take it to the Lord and repent here very soon will be turned over to a reprobate mind. And when they are turned over to a reprobate mind, they will be marked with the Antichrist spirit in their heart divorcing God, divorcing Jesus Christ, Yeshua, divorcement, adultery, idolatry against God Almighty. We are coming up on home stretch here, you guys. It's almost here and I am warning you. I am just a voice crying in the wilderness, a light shining in the darkness, a guiding light leading you not by my own light of course but the light of jesus christ guiding you and leading you to the truth but it is up to you my friend it is up to you to really search these things out prayerfully for yourself it is up to you to repent it is up to you to begin to question everything it is up to you ultimately and i pray that you make the right decision i pray that you turn to the lord I pray that your eyes will be open and you will see that the overall majority of everything, everything that we've been being taught is deception and you will be responsible. It is you who will be accountable on that day. You will be accountable even in your ignorance. If you choose to be ignorant, you will be accountable. It is you who will have to answer to God. It is your eternity not my eternity it's your eternity it is between you and the lord if i don't tell you these things then i will be partly accountable for your eternity your blood will be on my hands and i can't do that i take this way too seriously and trust me when i say i'm not making money speaking the truth i'm losing i'm losing support by speaking the truth I have lost support on Patreon. I have lost support 
here on social media. I have lost all sorts of support. I'm shadow banned. I'm hindered from every side. Yet I will keep going forward in the Lord and putting out the truth. It's like swinging a machete, cutting the weeds as I keep moving forward. And I will keep doing so and I will keep telling the truth. And I trust my Lord, my God Almighty to provide. This is so important, you guys. This is so important. You see, I'm not selling anything. In fact, I offer my Truth Hunters platform that I pay for as viewer supported to all of you for free, while most other people charge a fee for you to ha have access to their platform on Roku and Apple TV and Amazon and their apps and all that. I provide it to you for free. There's nothing I'm selling. I don't have a book I'm peddling. I don't have a product. The only thing that I'm trying to tell you and to do is to glorify the Lord God Almighty and to get you to see the truth and to repent. All I'm trying to do is to open your eyes and open your ears to the truth of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. My reward, my friend, is in heaven with the Lord. During my short stay on this earth, doing what he has chosen for me to do, I will receive persecution. I suffer all the time in the spirit. I get attacked and all sorts of things. But my reward is in heaven. My friend, if you repent and call upon the real Jesus, ask him to reveal himself to you. Search as if searching for buried treasure, even more as if you're looking for the cure to a deadly disease that maybe you or your loved one has. Search the scriptures like you know it's in there. The answer, the cure. You will find it. Search deeply, do the word studies forsake all former teachings god bless all of you thank you so much for watching this message thank you for listening please i cannot tell you enough you guys and i know you've heard this for years but i tell you the truth we are at the very very end please take this seriously and search for all of these things in the word of God search deeply while there is still time because there's still a little bit of time for you to find it and then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free